In this video, we're going to take a look at solving absolute value inequalities. So the inequality symbols you are hopefully familiar with, we have less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to. <clears throat> Steps to solving absolute value inequalities are that they're very similar to absolute value equations, but a little bit different. We want to get the absolute value symbol by itself again. We want to write out two inequalities. One is like our positive one that stays the same. And the second one, we switch the inequality symbol and we will switch the sign of the number on the other side. We're going to solve both inequalities and then we're going to graph our solution on the number line. And once again, we can check our work using Desmos. Okay, so let's take a look at four examples. So for number one, we have the absolute value of 2x plus 7 is less than 11. So we can see that the absolute value symbol is already by itself. So let's go on to the next step and write out two inequalities. We have 2x plus 7 is less than 11. So notice that one looks like the original problem just without the absolute value symbol. And then we need to write 2x plus 7, change the inequality to be greater than, and make the number a negative 11. So change the sign of the inequality and the sign of the number on that second inequality. Next, we're going to solve both. So let's subtract 7. And once again, we can do the same thing to the equation on the right. So bring down 2x is less than 11 minus 7, which is 4, and divide both sides by 2. So we get x is less than 2. So on my number line, we'll graph that once we get our other answer in just a minute. So let's bring down 2x over here on the right is greater than negative 11 minus 7, which is negative 18. Then we divide by 2, so we get x is greater than negative 9. So as you're solving, remember with inequalities that the sign of the inequality changes if you divide or multiply by a negative while you're solving. So the sign of the inequality, meaning like less than, greater than, those signs will change if you divide or multiply by a negative number as you're solving. <clears throat> okay, so let's graph it and check it with Desmos. So to graph x is less than 2, x is greater than negative 9, let's put 0 in the middle, about right there, and let's put 2, and then let's count to negative 9, so negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So if x is greater than negative 9, I need to have an open circle because it's not equal to and shade toward numbers that are bigger than negative 9. And x is less than 2, so that needs to be open because it's not equal to 2. And it needs to shade toward numbers that would be less than 2, so like 0, negative 1, etc. So my graph should look like two open dots shaded in between. So in Desmos... We are able to type it in like it looks this time. So type the absolute value symbol, type 2x plus 7. Make sure you move outside the absolute value and put less than, oops, less than 11. And notice what you see is two dashed lines that fall where we have them on our number line. So notice we have a dashed line at negative 9 where it crosses the x-axis and at 2. And then it's shaded in between those two numbers. So that is one way to check your answer. If you like the way we were doing it in our first lesson, you could move the 11 over and turn this into a function. So let's look at it that way. So in Desmos, you could type it just like it looks and just check your number line, which it does check to equal the same thing. But we could also say the absolute value of 2x plus 7 minus 11 is less than, and then just put a y where that 11 was. And watch what happens. So if we have the absolute value of 2x plus 7, again, move outside the absolute value symbol, put minus 11 is less than y. 
then it really looks like an absolute value function. And you might like that better. But you have the same solution. It crosses the x-axis at negative 9 and 2. Those lines are dashed, which goes with the fact that we have open circles on our number line, and it's shaded in between the two. So it's just two different ways you can check your work. Okay, let's look at another one. So number two, we have the absolute value of 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 8. So the absolute value symbol is already by itself. Let's go ahead and set up two inequalities. 3x minus 2 is greater than or equal to 8. So it looks like the original problem, just without the absolute value symbol. And then we need a negative. So 3x minus 2, we need to change it to less than or equal to and make it a negative 8. In our next step, we're going to start solving. So let's add 2 to both sides to get rid of the 2 the minus 2, and bring down 3x is greater than or equal to 8 plus 2 would be 10. And then 3x is less than or equal to negative 8 plus 2, which is negative 6. And then let's divide both sides by 3. So we get x is greater than or equal to 10 thirds, which is like 3 and 1 third. And then x is less than or equal to negative 2. So let's put our 0 just in the middle of our number line. Let's count down to negative 2 and up to 3. 1, 2, 3, and a little bit past there would be like right there. So 3 and a third, or you could put 3.3 repeating is another way to write that. That would be fine. It might be easier to look at, but either way you want to do it and then let's put a solid dot because x is less than or equal to negative 2. So you want to have a solid circle there because it's equal to and then you want to shade toward the numbers that are smaller than negative 2. So toward more negative numbers and x is greater than or equal to 3 and 1 third. So fill that circle in and shade in the direction where numbers are bigger than 3 and 1 third which is to the right. So let's check that with Desmos. Remember there's two ways. You might like to just type it in directly just to check your number line, which is fine. It might be a little easier to deal with, but you could also make it look like an absolute value function. So notice what we have in Desmos. We have solid lines that are crossing the x-axis. Let me make my scale a little bit more Let's see, you can zoom in and out to where the scale in Desmos makes each box equal one. There we go. So we can tell that it crosses at negative two and it crosses at what looks like three and a third. And then the lines are solid, which goes with what you see in Desmos. So these are solid and they're solid in Desmos. And then the shading is on the outside of those numbers, just like it looks in Desmos. So we're good. We have checked our work. Okay, let's look at number three. Three has the absolute value of 4x minus 2 plus 3 is greater than 19. So let's move that 3 out of the way so that we get the absolute value by itself. So the absolute value of 4x minus 2 is now greater than 16. Now we can set up our two inequalities. So we have 4x minus 2 is greater than 16, just like it looks. Drop the absolute value symbol. And 4x minus 2, change it to less than and change it to a negative 16. And then we can solve our inequalities. So let's add 2 to both sides. So we get 4x is greater than 18 and 4x is less than negative 14. <clears throat> we can divide both sides by 4. Since 4 is multiplying, you want to do the opposite operation. And we get x is greater than, and this would turn out to be 9 halves because they both divide by 2. 18 divided by 2 is 9, and 4 divided by 2 is 2. Or... You could just divide and make it a decimal, which is 4.5. And that makes it easy to plot on your number line. On the right, we get x is less than negative 7 halves. 
or negative 3.5 when we reduce that fraction. Okay, so let's plot what we've got on our number line. So put zero somewhere in the middle. Let's count to 4.5. So one, two, three, four point five. And we're saying X is greater than 4.5. So put an open circle and shade to the right. Greater than means numbers that are bigger than that number. And then X is less than negative 3.5. So let's count from zero down. One, two, three, negative 3.5. And X is less than, so it's not equal to, so make an open circle and then shade toward numbers that are smaller. <clears throat> so let's type it in. Remember, just type the original problem so you can check your number line. So type it in like it looks, greater than 19. So notice we have dashed lines in Desmos, which is good because our circles are open. So notice these in Desmos are dashed and on your number line, they're open. And then it looks like it's crossing at the right numbers because it crosses at negative three and a half and four and a half. So good, we have checked our work. Let's do one more example. <clears throat> so for number four, we have negative five outside the absolute value of 2x plus 4 is greater than or equal to 40. So outside means it's multiplying. So we need to divide. So divide by negative 5 on both sides to get rid of it and bring down the absolute value of 2x plus 4. But notice we divided by a negative. So it's going to change the inequality sign because that happens anytime you divide an inequality by a negative. We got to change that symbol. But now we can set up our two equation, two inequalities. So we have 2x plus 4 is less than or equal to negative 8. So it now looks like the one right above there. Drop the absolute value symbol. And we have 2x plus 4, but change the sign back to greater than or equal to, and now make it a positive 8. And then we're just going to solve both. So let's start by subtracting 4 from both sides and bring down 2x is less than or equal to negative 12. We can divide by 2, and we get x is less than or equal to negative 6. On the right, we got 2x is greater than or equal to 8 minus 4, which is 4. Divide both sides by 2, so you get x is greater than or equal to 2. All right, so let's plot that on our number line. Just put 0 somewhere in the middle. Go to 2, and it said x is greater than or equal to 2. So it's equal to 2. Got to fill it in and shade toward numbers that are greater than 2, so they're bigger than 2 to the right. And then let's go to negative 6. So negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 6. And x is less than or equal to negative 6, so shade it in and then shade to the left toward numbers that would be more negative than negative 6, so they're smaller, they're less than. And now let's check this problem. So again, type just like it looks. I really think that'll be the easiest way to check it, since you don't have to change anything. And 40. Now notice 40 is pretty far away. So, let's see. Oh. I think I know what's happening. So, notice right here in our problem. Let's go back to this step right here. So, notice how we have an absolute value that is less than or equal to a negative. So, an absolute value of anything... So no matter what it is, let's just call it x, would have to be a positive number because it's the distance of something from zero. So for that to say it's less than or equal to negative eight, it is not possible for that to happen. So even though we came up with these 
solutions and it looks okay on our number line, if we were to plug in numbers, they won't make any sense. Let me show you. So if we plug in, let's pick the number three, for example, and we plug that into our original problem. So let's do negative five times the absolute value of two times three plus four is greater than or equal to 40. We get negative five times the absolute value of six plus four is greater than or equal to 40, which is negative five times the absolute value of 10 is greater than or equal to 40. Well, negative five times 10 is negative 50. And negative 50 is not greater than or equal to 40. So the numbers you would choose to plug in and check will not make sense. And then in Desmos, it shows you that it doesn't show up. And so what happened was in the beginning, we could have stopped right there on that next step after the first one, and we could have concluded that it's not possible. But I really think it's good to work through one of these so you can see what happens. You can actually come up with an answer that looks like it's reasonable, but it just doesn't work. So that's it for solving absolute value inequalities.